Digital Marketing Radio, episode 218. Should online quizzes be part of your digital marketing strategy? DigitalMarketingRadio.com Broadcasting live on the Digital Marketing Radio Facebook page, this is the weekly show that prizes actionable advice from today's top digital marketers. Catch up with all the previous episodes at DigitalMarketingRadio.com The big interview with David Bain well, hello there, I'm David Bain, and today I'm joined by a man who claims he's seen more quizzes than pretty much anyone in the world. He's the founder of a quiz builder used by 30,000 brands, including the American Red Cross, Tony Robbins, and Lush Cosmetics. Welcome to DMR, Josh Hainham. Thanks for having me, I appreciate it. Well, thanks for coming on, good to have you here. You can find... Josh, of course, over at tryinteract.com. So, Josh, why quizzes? Good question. Good question. Um, I think it's really a psychological thing. Uh, people have always loved taking quizzes. If you think about it, going back to even pre-internet, if anybody can remember that, <laughs> uh, in a different world where people would actually print things on papers, um, there was quizzes back then, right? It was like, what's your love language or you know, who's your celebrity crush or whatever, right? Uh, that was printed out on the back of magazines. People loved that. You can rewind even further and you can look at pubs in Dublin in the 1700s and they would have pub nights and they would have quizzes there and they'd ask people what they know about different subjects around the world and it drew huge crowds and people loved this idea of seeing how much they knew or finding out something about themselves based on a personality quiz, something like that. So it's really been a long-standing tradition of people enjoying taking quizzes, which are very conversational, it's back and forth, you find out something, whether it's how much you know, or your personality, or your type of X, Y, or Z. And now, that's being transferred over to the internet. And through Interact, my platform, my company, uh, you are able to actually recreate that same experience that people have enjoyed for hundreds of years through Facebook, through Twitter, through websites, and it's just catching fire. So. That's really the, the general concept of it. So I can understand that fun interaction and obviously where it came from, people, get, people getting together in groups and, and, and perhaps mimicking that online as well. But um, is there really a business case for it? Um, wh why would businesses want to embrace quizzes online? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, if you're on Facebook at all, you've recognized that these quizzes are everywhere, right? Like people are sharing their results and sometimes even people that you would never expect to share quizzes. We've, we've seen quizzes where the average quiz taker was a 75-year-old man, which you think about like your grandpa and you're like, that's very strange that grandpa is posting what kind of car he is on Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. But it works. And... For brands and companies, anytime something like that happens where you're noticing a very, very large trend in what people are doing on their own, you need to pay attention to that and see how you can get involved. So for brands with quizzes, they can take the same concept of like, what type of car are you that grandpa is posting on Facebook? And you can use that if you are a car maker or a brand that promotes different types of cars or a car magazine or a car show. Um, conversely, if you're the Red Cross and you're looking at quizzes like, you know, what's your personality type, you can create quizzes like, what's your volunteer personality, which is one they've done and shared around the world with hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. And that's used to promote the Red Cross, their initiatives. And what you can actually do with our platform is use those quizzes to build up an email list. And the way that works is you create a quiz, you share it out onto Facebook, something like that. People come and take your quiz, as they do, and when they get to the end of the questions on that quiz, they're going to be presented with an email capture form. Enter your email to see your results, and we'll send you personalized follow-ups based on your outcome, which you can do. And then it's a way to build up your email list and segment that list at the same time. And since you've already got people engaged, once you show them their results, you can link to resources. So like with the Red Cross, once they show you your volunteer type, there's a button that says click here to volunteer at your local Red Cross. And that helps them grow their own business, if you will, as a nonprofit and get more people in the door. So 
That's really the business case is that you're taking advantage of what's already happening in the market, what people are already doing, and then applying it to your specific company, your specific use case. So looking at things from a cold business perspective, is this just a, a fancy interactive lead capture? To some extent, yeah. I mean, if you boil it down, it's at its very simple core, that's what it is. What it really does is facilitate a conversation. So if you think about brands trying to connect with their customers, right, and you look at marketing, oftentimes it's some sort of broadcast where you're broadcasting something out and hoping that your customers are interested, whereas a quiz allows you to conversate with them. You ask them questions, they respond. You ask them another question, they respond again. So that's, that's the magic of why it gets people in the door. But when you simplify it way down, it really is just a new way of generating new leads, which every business since the beginning of time has relied on new leads coming in the door. Like, you know, even in the very, very first businesses, they needed people to walk into the shop so they could sell, you know, blacksmith services. And now you need, you know, new leads in order to sell your digital products or your services, things like that. Sure. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. It's all good, obviously. I'm just trying to drill down just to um, understand the core business use for, uh, obviously, what, what, what you're doing and what you're offering, what you're participating in here. So mm -hmm. if you're comparing then using a quiz rather than something a little bit more basic, rather such, such as uh, a PDF and then having an opt-in form to get that PDF download and that obviously captures that person's details as well. Are you saying that a quiz, because it's more interactive, is more likely to actually result in a lead that is a little bit more warm and comfortable with talking to you and potentially more comfortable with doing business with you? Yeah, so there's there's two parts actually. So that's absolutely correct, which is that we hear from our customers all the time and it makes natural sense that if somebody has already been assigned a personality type or a score and then as your follow-up from the company side you're jumping right in and talking about that personality type like your volunteer personality type is the giver like you like to you know give and and volunteer and really uh, just sacrifice whatever hours are needed anything like that if you jump on the phone and start talking to somebody with that as the premise rather than, hey, you should start volunteering for the Red Cross. That's such a different conversation, right? Like you're talking about a very specific thing and it's a really easy jumping off point rather than this broad general thing of helping out with the Red Cross. So that's one thing. The other so, thing so, sorry, is Sorry, are you quiz, also trying to establish yeah. the personality of the person who's taking the quiz? Yeah, so I mean a quiz will automatically do that. You'll you'll have them answer the questions, the quiz taker, right. and then at the end, you're gonna assign them a personality. And that personality is going to be tied to their email address if they did opt in. And okay. so then when you follow up with them, and sometimes you ask for phone numbers as well on the quizzes, um, if you follow up with them, then you're gonna be able to follow up with their personality already in mind. Okay, okay, so the personality is obviously gleaned from the answers they give or inferred, uh, in, inferred from the answers they give rather than actually any um, questions that overtly talk about uh, personality and what their natural traits are. Yeah, so it, that's kind of part of the magic of it too is that a quiz might ask questions like, you know, what's your favorite breakfast beverage? You know, are you coffee or tea? Uh, or, you know, what do you like to do on weekends? Like go outside or hang out with friends or family or whatever. And you're answering these questions. And then at the end, you're going to be assigned a personality type. If we go back to like the volunteer one, you're going to be assigned your volunteer personality type, even though the questions that you answered are not super directly related. It's not asking you like, how many hours a week do you like to volunteer? That's not, you know, that's not a good question. The questions are more kind of general, but also personal. So that's how it ties back into the, the personalities. And that's part of the magic of, of why people love quizzes in the first place is it's like, oh, I'm answering these personal questions and I can kind of see how this might assign me a personality, but it doesn't really directly correlate. It's kind of a, a nebulous thing. And that's part of the appeal of why people love finding out those things. Got you. Okay. So what are some of the best practices of actually putting a quiz together? Um, is it just on one page? Is it, can you recommend a certain quantity of questions or something like that? 
Yeah. Yeah, I can give you the quick rundown. Uh, so basically, the way you want to set up a quiz, there are certain elements to it. There is what you're going to see when you first land on a quiz page. So that's what's called the cover. And on the cover, you want to have a title for your quiz, obviously. And that title is going to be in the format of which blank are you or what type of blank are you. So which volunteer, what type of volunteer are you? Uh, you know, what type of beverage are you if you're a beverage company? Uh, all sorts of things like that, right? So fill in the blank with whatever makes sense for your business, and that's the title. Then we run down to the image that's on the cover of the quiz, and we recommend having people on that image because our eyes are naturally diverted to people when we see them. So if you're sharing that quiz out on Facebook and it's showing up on a feed, you want to have people on the cover. So that's your cover, and then you have a take quiz button. That's, that gets you started with the quiz. Within the quiz, you want to have seven questions. And the way you want to write those questions is you want to sit down and you want to act like somebody is literally sitting across from you, sitting across the table, and you are asking them questions. And you want to imagine a person that you would like to have taking your quiz. So with the volunteer quiz, imagine a potential volunteer sitting across from you. What questions would you ask them? and create those questions as your seven questions. And we say seven because seven questions takes about two minutes to complete, which is the ideal amount where people get really involved, but they don't get bored. So it's like right on that borderline. Okay. I mean, then you so have... All right. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, there's, there's two more parts. Two more parts. Go for it. <laughs> so you have your, your email capture form, which comes after the questions. And basically, on the email capture form, you want to give people a reason to opt in but then also promise to follow up based on their personality type, which is important. And then you have your quiz results, which are the personality types usually. And with the quiz results, all you need to keep in mind is that you have to be overly positive all the time. Make people feel good. I never tell them that they're bad uh, because people actually share, share positive things a lot more than they share negative things. So just shy away from it, even if it... Uh, they don't do so Even well. Even if you have to lie, yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, white lies, white lies. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it seems, you know, a fair amount to ask people to do. You, know, you say it only takes two minutes, so perhaps it's not too much. But um, do you offer an incentive in order to encourage people to fill this in, um, some kind of payment or a gift or something like that, or is it not a good idea to do that? I mean, honestly, you don't need to. We have seen that when you put quizzes in that format of the, like, what type of blank are you or which type of blank are you, the engagement on those things is insane. Click-through rates from Facebook are like 30 to 50%. Facebook ads anywhere from 10 to 50%. Like, the click-through rates are absolutely absurd just because as I kind of alluded to at the beginning, like quizzes have always been something that just tap into a psychological thing uh, where people just love taking them. There's actually this meme that's like, um, it goes something like, and then people forgot that quizzes kept coming around again and again until the end of time. And it's like, <laughs> People just, you forget and then you realize again that like, oh, yeah, these things are still here and they have not gone away, um, you know, as far as, as far back as people have been gathering, they've been quizzing each other and now with the pro proliferation of social media and just being able to share them a lot more, they're just everywhere and that's, that's another part of why they're so amazing is that you don't have to incentivize people they'll just take them on their own and then you're also able to use them to, to generate leads. So it's a win-win. So what about the fact that the majority of web traffic actually tends to be mobile nowadays? Does that not mean that uh, people are spending less time and are wanting to flick away from the content that, that you're offering and you need to consider having less questions for mobile devices or does it just work equally well for mobile compared with desktop? Still works. I mean, we we see probably five to seven million quizzes taken a month on our platform, and the average completion rate. So, out of the people that start taking a quiz, ninety percent finish taking them. Nine out of ten, wow. which is absurd. Yeah. For for ninety percent of seven million people to finish anything that takes two minutes, is like kind of silly. 
at this point, like with how short our attention spans are, that's like, that's asking a lot. And it's just a testament to the fact that not only do people like to talk about themselves because a quiz lets you talk about yourself and answer questions that are personal, but also we love finding out things about ourselves. So once we start, not only are we getting to do what we like, which is answering questions about ourselves, but we're also getting that anticipation of like, ooh, what is my outcome going to be? Like, what am I going to find out about myself at the end of this? So those two things are just like powerful on a level that's, that's very shocking almost because again, 90% of 7 million people a month finishing quizzes is not standard. And 75% of those people come from mobile. So most of those are on mobile devices. Um, and you're really just able to capture attention, which as a brand is so crucial. Like other mediums, you know, TV ads, email, stuff like that. People are probably doing four or five other things while they're, you know, looking at your ad. With a quiz, they're fully engaged. They're not doing anything else they're reading the questions and answering them. So it is kind of magical. And are you split testing questions all the time to try and improve that completion rate? Yeah. So with our platform, you can easily duplicate quizzes and run multiple versions. So you can test, you know, is it better to have five questions maybe? Because, you know, sometimes you know, seven is the average, but five might work best, nine might work best. We've seen people where adding questions works better, where taking away works better, writing the questions in a different format, adding images versus just text, all that kind of stuff. So you can really split test a lot of things. So what's an example of a question that um, you've seen that has surprised you the positive impact it's had on the completion rate? Yeah, really good question. Really good question. I think the ones that really stand out to me are the ones that ask deeply personal but also surfacey questions and I'll break that down a little bit because it's slightly confusing basically what I mean is like questions along the lines of where's your favorite place to go on vacation or what type of house fits your personality and those are deeply personal questions because you know asking somebody where they would prefer to live ties into a lot of personal things like what type of people do you want to live around? Like what type of area do you want to live in? You know, how big of a family do you want to have? All that kind of stuff, right? Which we don't think about when that question's presented, you know, on the surface, but we are thinking about that subliminally. And I think that's part of what draws us in. So anything along those lines of like a sort of surfacey question, like where do you want to go on vacation? But it ties a lot into who you actually are as a person. Those are the types of questions that really, really tend to draw people in and get them super engaged and really thinking about, you know, how to answer those questions and they don't want to click away because once they've answered those, they want to see how that affects their personality type and that's, that's what gets them uh, stuck on the quiz. So is it good to have a mixture between open-ended questions and questions that have um, only a certain number of answers, preset answers? So you actually want to have all presets because okay. the thing that that will the thing that will detract from people finishing a quiz is if they have to overthink it, right? Like they want to answer these questions, but they don't want to think about it too much. They want to have the answers presented to them and then choose the best fit. If you make them stop and think, they will leave because at that point it's it's too much effort. It's like ah, uh, I don't know, I I, I don't want to know what the best answer is for this, all that kind of stuff. So you do want to have preset answer choices that are really easy to pick from. Great. Okay. Well, I mean, it certainly seems like something that a lot of businesses sh should be giving a go. Um, what sort of business, if any, is this? you know, absolutely key and essential um, to give this a go to you? Would you say, is there a type of business this is particularly suitable for? Yeah, there's a few that work really well. One is in the marketing space. So anybody who's like a marketing consultant or selling online courses for marketing, things like that, this is a perfect fit because marketers are some of the most introspective people. And if those are your clients, then running quizzes for them works super well. Another industry that this is really, really strong in is with retail because you can always do a quiz like what's the best pair of shoes for you based on your personality? You know, what's the best bag for you based on your personality? You can do all these applications, right? And that's what Lush Cosmetics is doing 
it's like what's the best you know what's the best makeup for you based on your personality what's the best soap and they get really f silly with it sometimes and that's part of the beauty of it as well is that you can just you can do so many just random goofy things with this especially in the retail space and then nonprofits is another one where it's been really successful you know we work with the red cross we work with Oxfam, we work with Amnesty, we work with Greenpeace, the United Nations. Most of the world's largest nonprofits are on our platform creating stuff like, you know, what's your volunteer personality or which social, social justice hero would you be um, or which historical hero would you be, things like that. Right, okay. So um, what are some of the first steps that a, a business should do to actually get started? Um, is it easy to actually just get something up and running as a test fairly quickly? Yeah, so our biggest challenge as a company is that this is a new concept and 99% of our customers have never used quizzes in marketing before. So we want to make sure that you're not stuck making a lot of decisions when it comes to how to set up your quiz and how to implement it and things like that. So. The way our platform works is you sign up, you select the type of industry that you're in, so retail or nonprofit or marketing, or you know, we have about 40 different industries. You select the one that's closest to you. Then we'll present you with quizzes you can choose from. So it's almost like a quiz question, like which of these quizzes do you want? And then you choose the one that you want. You load that in. It's a pre-made quiz template that is already optimized to convert, so it follows all the best practices we kind of went over. And then you can modify different pieces of it. So we recommend, you know, modifying some of the questions, maybe adding some images you like, and then adding buttons and links that go to your website so that it's personalized to you and you can change the colors and stuff like that. And then you link it up to your email list so that it'll collect leads for you, obviously. And then you can launch that out onto your website and share it on Facebook. You know, there's really two ways that you want to promote a quiz. One is on your website. So add it as a link to your header or in the sidebar or in the footer so that people who are already on your website can take your quiz and opt in. And then the other way is on Facebook, so share it out onto Facebook um, or run it as a Facebook ad. And all of those things are just step by step in our platform. So our platform to make a quiz is very similar to taking a quiz where you only have to do one step at a time, you know, choose a quiz modify some stuff uh, and then publish it out and you're ready to go. So it's very, very straightforward and we have most of the stuff already done for you and then you can just make some small modifications and launch out something in your industry uh, that's already designed to work well. Great. Okay. Well, I love hearing about different digital marketing activities that um, I'm perhaps aware of, but I haven't looked into in much depth so this is one of these so thank you for sharing that with us so in a moment dear listener dear viewer we're going to be moving on to the second part of the discussion so that's where i'm going to be asking josh about the software that he couldn't live without but first of all have you purchased my copy of digital marketing in 2017 the book yet so that's 107 digital marketers all in one book all sharing their number one actionable tip for the year and written by me of course so you can check that out, have a look at the reviews, and grab your copy over at digitalmarketingin2017.com. But let us segue over to the second part of our discussion. So that focuses on Josh's thoughts on where digital marketing's been and where it's heading. So starting off with... Software I couldn't live without. So Josh, what software do you currently use in your business that if someone took away from you, it would significantly impact your marketing success? Yeah, there's a few tools that I'm on pretty much every day. Um, we use a CRM called Close.io. That's a very simple CRM for managing our contacts. And that allows me just to log in and, and send emails and make phone calls and things like that very quickly. We use Trello to manage our priorities and what's coming next, things like that. We use WordPress for blogging and then Photoshop to create uh, graphics and things like that, as well as a little bit of Canva. So those are really the primary tools that, that I'm on almost every single day uh, just to make sure that everything's set up. And then obviously Google Calendar. Can't live without that because if it's not on there, I will forget. So that <laughs> is my tool set. Okay, well, some some great software um, to, uh, to share there. But um, 
That answer was a little bit too easy, so a slightly more challenging question, and that is, what piece of software don't you use, but you've heard good things about, and you intend to try at some point in the near future? Mm -hmm. Good question. Um, there's a software called PictoChart. It's a software for creating infographics, which we've played with creating infographics in the past, and I think some of our content could use some visual upkeep, if you will. So that is one that I've been meaning to play around with, but just haven't yet. Wonderful. And I don't think I've had that recommendation before. And this is episode 218. So that's, that's pretty good going as well. So I love hearing nice. one of them. But let us move on to... I wish I would have. So I'd like you to look back in the very first day that you're trying to market a business online. What didn't you do so well? What do you wish that you would have done differently? Yeah, and I... I I think I'll take it past day one because I think I started off right. And by right, I mean that marketing online should be a personal connection. I always think it needs to start and end with people talking to each other. And right after I got started doing it that way, I switched over and tried to scale it up too fast and turn it into like blogging and things like that where it wasn't so much of the one-on-one -on -one conversations and it was a lot more of like broadcasting stuff out and it really slowed things down and now we're back to you know personal connections and i i love that my team now probably does i would say upwards of like two or three hundred calls a week um right. with people one-on-one -on -one, like for as long as they want to talk to us and i think that is going to proliferate and as we get bigger that number is going to continue so i would say falling away from that personal outreach, personal connection at some point because I was trying to scale too fast uh, was one thing that I wish I hadn't done. And when you're talking about 200 calls, are you talking about people who have already completed quizzes and perhaps left contact details or is this outbound calls to target markets? Oh, so those are within our business. So existing customers who have okay. questions, uh, potential customers who want to see a demo, stuff like that. Great. The this or that round. So let's move on to the quick response round. So that's 10 quick questions, just uh, two rules here. So try not to think about the answer too much. And you're only allowed to say the word both on one occasion. So use it wisely. Mm. You ready to go? Ready. Twitter or Snapchat? Twitter. Facebook or LinkedIn? LinkedIn. YouTube or Facebook Live? YouTube. Mobile or desktop? Desktop. Website or app? Website. Paid search or SEO? SEO. Outreach or advertise? Outreach. Email to one or email to many? to one all the time. Social subscriber or email subscriber? Social. And local marketing or global marketing? Global. Yay! No, both required at all there. That was just um, smooth and just uh, no stress at all. Were you nope. struggling with any answer there? I think the only one was social versus email. Um, you know, we've always been an email first company but recently introducing some social stuff and I think I'm seeing a lot of potential in it so it's still kind of uncharted territory but I, I think at this point it's it's more interesting to me. And I found it a little bit surprising that you chose desktop over mobile so you get more traffic through mobile but are you saying that desktop because desktop converts better? Uh, I mean, I was thinking about it more in terms of my own right. work, like my own work day. Like whenever possible, I mute all mobile notifications because if I don't unplug at some point, it just gets to be overwhelming way too fast. So I try to have some sort of distinction between when I'm working and when I'm not. And mobile quickly envelopes all of your life with notifications. So I, I try to keep it as much to the desktop as possible. It's very easy to go from work to social and then forget what you're doing completely. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> that ten thousand dollar question. So if I was to give you ten thousand dollars and you had to spend it over the next few days on a single thing to grow your business, what would you spend it on, and how would you measure success? Yeah, I think I would spend it on. I mean, it, I don't know if we could even spend it that quickly, but on building out our network of partners. You know, we love to do marketing through other folks in the marketing space and it's uh it's something that we're scaling up right now and i would invest it directly into that and we'd measure the success by how many new partners we're able to connect with okay so what has been the most successful way so far of actually making that initial relationship is it, is it actually face to face or is it through some online method a lot of it's email, a lot of it's email. Okay. Uh, we do do some face-to-face -face, uh, and then social connection as well through LinkedIn. My number one takeaway. Oh, Josh, you've offered a lot of great advice in our conversation, but what is the number one takeaway? What's the single most important step that our listener needs to take away and implement in their business? Yeah, I think it's something that carries through both what we do with quizzes and what I've been alluding to with the personal connection, even though those don't necessarily seem to connect that well. But it's really that I think everything starts and ends with a connection between two people, uh, whether it's a business and a customer or a business and a partner, whatever it is. Everything needs to come down to some sort of connection and those connections cannot necessarily be rushed or forced or anything like that. And with marketing, a lot of times we try to force things by blasting out more and more and more messages. But I think at the end of the day, there's a lot more value in putting in the time, putting in the work and actually taking the time to care about whoever it is you're connecting with whether it's you know through a quiz and figuring out who they are before you get on the phone or it's when you're making a call to somebody and you take the time to figure out what their interests are before you hop on the call whatever that is i think it's very very valuable to establish those connections and continue establishing those connections and that's a universal thing that works in literally any business great advice well that takes us to the end of our discussion today so thank you so much for your time and your advice so um what's the best way for a listener to find out more about you and what you do yeah definitely definitely uh my website is tryinteract.com that's where you can go to create quizzes and all that kind of good stuff i write a lot on our blog so tryinteract.com slash blog you kind of hear more of my thoughts on marketing and things like that and then i'm on twitter at jay hanum and that's where i'm usually online wonderful and i will include Links to all of that in the show notes at digitalmarketingradio.com. So wonderful. Thank you to Josh and thank you to our listener too. If you have an opinion of what Josh shared today, tell us what you think. So the Facebook page is, of course, facebook.com slash digitalmarketingradio. You can tweet me at David Bain. Plus, remember to subscribe to the podcast if you're not already. So you can do that at digitalmarketingradio.com slash iTunes for iPhones or digitalmarketingradio.com slash Android for Android devices. But until we meet again, be fantabulous and do one thing that scares you. Adios. Cheers, Josh. Great episode. Thank you. Thank you. And let me find the off button for the video streaming here. Ah. Oh, here we go. There it is. Yes. <laughs> well